Hey guys, so really good news in my opinion. I mean, it's not very new for you, new for you probably, but micro long range quad have sort of become a thing. It's a new class of quad. It all started with, of course, the micro long range open source project back in November of last year. And meanwhile, quite a lot of manufacturers jumped on the bandwagon. YouTube is full of these comparison videos. This one is really good from Albert Kim, for example. So there are quite a lot of uh, frames, PNP, BNF products out there. And I think, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm quite proud of that. And I think it's really cool that it went in this direction. So what I want to do today is uh, sort of give you my take on all of these different products that are out there. We're going to go through them one by one. I mean, I didn't test them, to be honest. Uh, it's not like all these manufacturers did send me one of uh, their products, so I didn't have any occasion to fly them and really test them. But I think I can still give you my take on their overall spec and frame design and so on. All right, so um, let's dive right into it. Obviously, the first sort of commercial uh, micro long range product that was released was the Flywoo Explorer. So this one here is the collaboration project between me and Flywoo. And you can see, obviously, there's my name on the top plate here. So uh, this is really the first um, first one that was released and still the closest to the original micro long range concept. So it is based on the original design files. Flywoo did make some adjustments and improvements to the frame, but the overall geometry and size and so on is the exact same. There are some improvements or some evolutions in terms of the motors. Of course, these are Dave C low KV 1404 motors. This is something that didn't ex exist prior to the Flywheel Explorer. So we were able to move up on 4S while still using a 16 by 16 ESC and keeping weight as low as possible and increasing efficiency by uh, going down in KV and up in voltage. We have this new super long, long range antenna here in the rear, and it does have the independently powered buzzer in case you rip off the battery in a crash and um, need to find your model, you're still gonna find it. And honestly, I think this is super important to have this independent buzzer on these models. You can sort of see it here. It's this thing here below the GPS. So honestly, if I wouldn't have had that, I would have lost a couple of uh, these models by now because it's so super easy not to find them anymore. If you don't have a loud buzzer, at least, um, you know, you're flying quite far away, you're flying long range, maybe you're crashing, something happens, and usually you really only have a very rough idea of where it could be. So if it's crashing into high grass, you basically are you know, you're out of luck if you don't have a good independent buzzer. So obviously I still think this one uh, is the best product in my opinion because it's the closest to my original project. It's one of the lightest. It's got all the, all the you know, long range capabilities and equipment and it's also still the most efficient with the longest reported flight times. Um, oh, and one question I often get that I wanted to clarify. So I'm not getting a commission or anything from Flywoo for each of these that are sold, but obviously um, it was quite successful. So Flywoo, although we didn't agree on this before, so it was quite nice of them. They did give me a uh, a bonus, a contribution. I did get um, I did get a part of the profit, so that's really nice. So. Uh, thanks to Flywoo for that. And of course, I mean, if you want to support my work and all this testing I do, you can buy these uh, products through the affi affiliate links that are in the video description. Um, it doesn't even have to be uh, the exact product in the, the link. You can just click on this link and buy anything on Banggood. And this is going to, you know, give me a small commission that makes it possible to uh, buy new components and so on to do more testing. So, but uh, back to the topic now, um, the Flywoo Explorer was the first one that was released and really quite fast afterwards. 
uh, we had the iFlight camera come out. So <laughs> the FPV industry obviously is moving incredibly fast. Uh, product development cycles are super short. So just a few weeks after the Flywheel Explorer, the iFlight camera for LR was released. Now this one, um, and I mean, just to clarify this upfront, I don't think this is a bad thing. I mean, it's not like iFlight is stealing my designs or taking, you know, the files of Thingiverse and publishing them. It, it's sort of a normal thing that, you know, other manufacturers are releasing similar products if sort of a new class emerges, and it's a good thing. I mean, it gives consumers more choice. <coughs> Sorry. And, um, you know, makes the whole thing evolve and is overall really not a bad thing. So iFlight released a sort of Me Too product, a similar product, but, you know, it sort of took a different route. It's more geared towards uh, freestyle capability. So it's a wide X, slightly uh, wider than a taller X. So that means you're going to have the props in view uh, compared to a dead cat layout, but it does help flight performance. Dead cat layouts usually... Um, they aren't necessarily making flight performance worse, but also they aren't really helping with tuning, makes tuning a bit more difficult. So this all will probably perform a little a little bit better on a wide X. So they went for a wide X. So you're gonna have to live with props in view, but it will probably perform better for freestyle. Also, they gave it a massive four millimeter bottom plate, no, no separate arms. Um, so, I mean, if you're gonna break one of these arms, which is probably very hard to do on 4 millimeter. you're going to have to replace the entire, um, entire bottom plate, which is going to be a pretty big hassle. But, okay, so no separate arms, big bottom plate. This increases weight. This thing is pretty heavy. So 10 grams more than the Flywheel Explorer. 10 grams doesn't sound like much, but if you have to stay sub 250, which is already usually pretty close on this type of quads, uh, that's a problem. These 10 grams really are a problem to be sub 250. So still, they went for something more robust. Uh, there's also a high kV version, so not only a 3000 kV motor, which is already a little bit higher than the Flywheel Explorer, there's also a 3800 kV version if you want more power. I don't think this is the best way to go if you want to freestyle and have more power. I'd rather have put some 1505s on there, but uh, I don't think iFlight does uh, have 1505 motors. So probably that's why they just increased the kV on the freestyle version but overall not a bad product uh, pretty good choice if you're not so much focused on long range and efficiency and still want to have a bit more freestyle capability all right then the next one that was released was the gap rc crocodile baby so this one in terms of specs is really very close to the flywheel explorer it's pretty much the exact same weight it's also around 160 grams at least the vista version Exact same motor spec, 1404, 2750 kV. It's got the independent buzzer. There's one uh, below the GPS here. There's the little buzzer with, buzzer with the battery. So it's pretty much the same spec. Um, I think, I honestly don't think the frame design has been done very nicely. It sort of looks put together quite quickly. Uh, it's also a dead cat, separate arms, which is good, but I don't know, something about it just looks a bit unelegant, <laughs> so not very, you know, it doesn't, there's just something honestly about it that I don't like. Uh, you know, all this TPU here on the camera just looks sort of improvised and quickly put together, but obviously, I mean, that's pretty subjective. It's just, you know, uh, I don't really like the aesthetics of it. Another thing I don't really like is that uh, the frame is basically empty on this setup, so everything is stacked here in the center. There's an all-in-one flight controller, Vista on top, and the rest of the frame is completely empty. Also, I mean, I don't know why they did that and why they didn't, you know, separate out the components, make them easier to uh, to access in case you need to. But okay, I mean, overall, it's something you're not going to notice in flight, probably. Uh, overall, this is going to perform pretty well and um, really also not a bad product. Uh, it's got everything you need for micro long ranging. And also in terms of price, I mean, these are all pretty much the same price. There's not much of a difference uh, between all of the models I'm going to show. All right, then the next one that was released, uh, the Diatone Roma. So this one, I think, is uh, from all the 
let's say Flyway Explorer competitors, this is the one with the nicest frame design in my opinion. I think, um, I mean, especially the, the camera situation here up front. So on dead cat, and it, this is a pretty extreme dead cat layout, so the rear arms are really pretty heavily swept back. The front arms are moved forwards and basically, you know, uh, at a 90 degree angle relative to the frame. And this means that your camera is quite a, quite exposed. So if you crash, as you can see, um, you're basically going to hit the camera directly. So this is why I think that this aluminum brace construction in the front here, so this camera is sitting in these aluminum um, machined parts, is actually really clever. So quite nicely solved here. Uh, I don't know about the top plate. Um, I think they got, they got a little bit carried away um, with making the top plate look fancy. Uh, I don't know why it gets narrow and wide again. I mean, that just seems a bit silly. But okay, overall, I think this is a very nice frame design. Uh, one mistake they made, in my opinion, is put this sort of TPU part over the Vista. That means you won't be able to have a second battery strap, which is um, often quite important to secure the battery. So that's, uh, but that's not a deal breaker. I mean, you can probably just cut off that excess TPU. I don't know what's in there probably the buzzer or the receiver. I don't think it's got an independently powered buzzer, so you might want to add one. Um, but overall, you know, again, similar price, uh, and I think a something that looks like a pretty decent, well spec product. Now, from the first test reports I saw, especially from Joshua Bart, well, I think that apparently it's also put together quite quickly. It doesn't seem like it's perfectly tuned. There was a bit of criticism about motors that run slightly rough. So I didn't test it myself. I don't know how true it is and how bad it actually is, but it seems like this one, you know, needs a bit of tuning and you, you know, uh, might not get something that runs perfectly smooth out of the box. But overall, I think um, it's a very good spec and very nice uh, frame design. So now the latest in line is an Ishin. Ishin also, you know, jumped on board. And Ishin usually is doing um, lower priced products, but honestly, in this case, uh, the reg regular price is also three hundred dollars. So it's really the same. I mean, this one is on sale because everything on Banggood is always on sale. <laughs> so this one's two hundred and sixty. It's slightly cheaper than the others, but I think they are pretty close in price. So basically same same and I don't really see why you would get the Ishin um, just because it really is slightly slightly cheaper and really not much compared to how, how cheap uh, Ishin products are usually so the Shadow Fiend Shadow Fiend uh, I think it's sort of <laughs> I mean I think while I do not think it's a bad frame design it's a little bit silly in some way I don't know uh, they sort of try to have uh, and it looks like Halloween themed you know you sort of have a face here on so an evil grinning face on the top plate they had got carried away with these you know flame uh, <laughs> flame shaped motor mounts and uh, I don't know it's a bit of a silly frame design with all these, these decorative elements here so <laughs> I don't know. Not sure about the the frame design in the details, but overall it doesn't look bad. It's probably gonna work fine. It seems to be a wide X2, so you're gonna have props in view. Um, very similar spec to all the other ones. GPS doesn't have a buzzer. Uh, not even a not independently powered buzzer. So that's a problem. You're gonna have to add one immediately, which uh, you know then in the end. It's gonna make it basically the same price uh, that you're gonna pay for for any of the other ones. So I don't see why you would get the Ishin one, although the models do look pretty nice. I don't know about quality, but yeah, that's the latest one that came out. I haven't seen any, you know, actual reviews of this one. But also, I mean, honestly, it might even get discounted more. So if it gets even cheaper than that, uh, then it's not a bad option. But so far, I think, uh, I don't see why you would get the Ishin, especially with Ishin's uh, reputation regarding, uh, you know, product quality and so on. All right, so um, yeah, that's Ishin. That's gonna come out soon too. And there's one more. So 
I'm not sure if this one is really in the same class. It's, in my opinion, so that's Catalyst Machine Works Shocker. Um, I'm to, you know, I don't want to make this, uh, this uh, you know, uh, not suitable for work <laughs> video, so I'm not going to explain what Shocker means. It's, uh, you know, it's about putting fingers in body openings and stuff. Um, Google it if you want to know what it means in the Urban Dictionary, if you don't know. Um, yeah, so the Shocker is closer to the mini long range. It's, for me, more of, more of a 5-inch design that also comes as a 4-inch, because it's a bit, little bit famous, a little bit bigger, it's a bit more complex design. It's M3 hardware, not M2, although they used aluminum to sh uh, shave off some weight. But I mean, overall, it's a really nice looking design. Um, but I think they, they've sort of designed this initially as an ultralight 5 inch and then made it 4 inch and then realized, okay, it's a bit too heavy for a micro long range for a 4 inch. Um, and then they went for aluminum hardware to reduce the weight. So the final result is it's, uh, I think the 4 inch version is 44 grams, which is, uh, I think, 4 or 5 grams heavier than the Flywheel Explorer frame, so that's actually okay. Around f almost 50 grams with standard steel screws that are sort of cheated here with aluminum screws. But it's it's slightly heavier, maybe uh, 5 to 10 grams heavier with steel screws, so a bit on the heavy side. Uh, and for me, more of a 5 inch, but obviously y you can take the 4 inch version and design, uh, build a really nice micro long range with this one if, um, you know, this is sort of the, the frame style you like and you don't want to go for, uh, you know, Chinese manufactured Banggood frames, I think the, the shocker here is a good option for you. All right, guys. Uh, oh, and by the way, I don't know if this one does come in a BNF or PNP version. I don't think so. You're going to have to build this one yourself uh, in that case. All right, guys. Um, that was it. These were all the micro long range uh products out there I know of at the moment uh, to another video if there are more coming out but I don't know of any apart from um, something I'm working on I can really soon another collaboration probably um, but that's another topic so I hope you found this uh, interesting and of course uh, don't forget to check out the affiliate links in the video description and to like and subscribe that really supports the channel all right bias guys Bye-bye.